iodine molecules dissociating to form iodine atoms in a reversible reaction. And then we are given the balance equation, the Kc, and the corresponding temperature. And then 6.1 says write down the meaning of the term reversible reaction. A reversible reaction is a reaction in which not only uh, does the reactants form the products, but even the products uh, form the reactants, right? And then 6.2 says, um, at equilibrium, the pressure of the system is increased by decreasing the volume of the container at constant temperature. And then how will each of the following be affected? Choose from increases, decreases, or remain the same. So 6.2, 6.2.1, the value of the equilibrium constant. We know fully well that the only thing that can change the value of the equilibrium constant is the temperature and nothing else. So we will easily say remains uh, the same. And then 6.2.2 says uh, the number of moles of uh, iodine atoms, right? So we have I with the I2 basically, uh, which is giving us uh, 2i, right? So the number of moles of uh, the products are greater than the number of moles of uh, the reactants. And how do we know that? Uh, we can see using the balancing coefficients, right? Because we know fully well that the number of moles of I divided by number of moles of I2 will be close to 2 divided by 1. So the number of moles of I is equal to 2 multiplied by the number of moles of I2. So we know that um, the number of moles of I are greater than the number of moles of I2. So when we increase the pressure, the system want to decrease that pressure, right? So it does that by favoring the reaction that leads to less number of moles. And the reaction that will lead to less number of moles is uh, the reverse reaction because it has the most number of moles, right? So 6.2.2 will say increases increases so if it was vice versa and we were decreasing the pressure then the forward reaction would be favored and we'd have a decrease in the number of moles of i2 and then 6.3 says explain the answer to question 6.2.2 by referring to a chatelier's principle that is basically what I just did, right? What I just explained. Um, the system wanna go back to a state of equilibrium. So if we increase something, the reaction that decreases that something will be favored. So we increase the pressure. So the reaction that, that leads to the less number of moles will be favored. That is the reverse and more number of I2 molecules. I hope that's clear. And then 6.4 says at 227 degrees Celsius, the Kc value for the reaction is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12. Is the forward reaction endothermic or exothermic? So let's make sense of the Kc value first. So at um, 727, right, the Kc value is 3.76 times 10 minus 3. And then now we're told that at 227, uh, the Kc value is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12, much less than at 727. So we decrease the temperature and the Kc value went down, right? But what does the Kc value tell us? We know that when you want to calculate Kc, we say Kc is equal to uh, basically the products, right? 
uh, divided by uh, the reactions. That's what we are essentially saying. Although we'll square based on the balancing coefficients and all that, but then this is what we are essentially saying. So if we decrease temperature and the Kc value goes down, it means that now we have less less products, right? We have less products. So the reverse reaction was favored by the decrease in temperature. Which reaction is favored by a decrease in temperature? That reaction is exothermic, right? So we're saying that the exo, uh, we're saying that the reverse reaction is exothermic. So that tells us consequently that the forward reaction is endothermic. And the question is asking us <laughs> to explain whether it's endo or exo, right? The forward reaction. So we're going to say for our answer, endothermic, because we know fully well that the reverse reaction is exothermic because it was favored by a decrease in temperature. And then again, it says fully explain your answer, which is what I just did, right? So when you're explaining your answer, uh, you can start by writing down these k values explaining that kc is basically products by reactions and then you can see that when we decrease the temperature there is less products so the reverse reaction is favored which uh reaction is favored by decrease in temperature that's exothermic so the forward reaction is consequently endothermic so let's do 6.5 6.5 says a certain mass of iodine molecules I2 is sold in a 12.3 decimeter cube flask at a temperature of 727 degrees Celsius and we are given the corresponding Kc value and then it goes on to say when equilibri equilibrium is reached the concentration of the iodine atoms is found to be 4.9 times 10 to the minus 3 mole per decimeter cube and then we're supposed to calculate the initial mass of the iodine molecules so before uh, we go anywhere else uh, let's have our equation so we have i2 uh, giving us and getting back from 2i right so if we uh, draw our table We're gonna have uh, the number of moles initial the change in the number of moles the number of moles in equilibrium and uh, the concentration right it says that for the concentration of the iodine atoms uh, at equilibrium we have 4.79 times 10 to the minus 3 so if we have this concentration here we can then calculate this number of moles here and then consequently uh, get the change in the number of moles because initially we had zero here right so now we're gonna say uh, the number of moles is equal to the concentration uh, multiplied by the volume uh, what is the concentration is given as 4.79 times 10 to the minus 3 and then we're supposed to multiply it by a volume of 12.3 so if we do that uh, we're gonna get 0 0.058917 right uh, is the number we get in here 0 0.058 so from 0 to 0 0.058917 it means uh, we had a change of plus 0 0.058817 and then as a consequence if we have a plus on the products then we're supposed to have a minus on the reactants right um, initially we don't know the mass of the iodine uh, molecules so we cannot calculate the number of moles but what we can do is just put n instead right and we're gonna solve it um when we go forward so here we're gonna have minus uh 0 0.05817 divided by 2 what is this 2 here for this is because for 
i we have a balancing coefficient of two and then for i2 we don't we have a balancing coefficient of one so if you do that so we have in 0, 0.0 five eight one seven uh divided by two so we're gonna have n minus zero point zero two nine eight five right and then uh the volume is twelve point three so here we're gonna have n minus zero point zero two nine eight five divided by twelve point three so now that we have the concentration at equilibrium we can have kc is equals to uh, the concentration of i to the power of two because that's the products right divided by the concentration of i2 to the power of one because uh, that's the balancing coefficient of i2 but we are given the kc as uh 4.79 actually as uh, 3.6 by 10 to the minus 3 right so we're gonna have 3.76 by 10 to the minus 3 is equal to the concentration of i squared uh, which is 4.79 by 10 to the minus 3 uh, divided by the concentration of i2 to the power of 1 uh, that will be n minus 0 0.029 um 29 uh, divided by 12.3 so basically for us to find the initial mass we have to solve for n first and then we're gonna use n equals to the mass divided by the molar mass to calculate the mass right so if we do that uh, we're gonna have uh, so I'll, I'll write it as n minus 0 0.02985 divided by 12.3 equals to 4.79 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 squared. We have a square here. I forgot to write it. And then we're going to divide all of this by 3.76 uh, multiplied by 10 to the minus 3. So we can actually break this n minus 0 0.02985 divided by 12.3 right if we do that we get n we get n divided by 12.3 minus 0 0.02985 divided by 12.3 which is equals to uh this same expression nothing is changing so i'm just gonna duplicate it instead of uh, writing it again so now we can take this term to the right hand side so we're gonna get n divided by uh, so we're gonna get n divided by 12.3 is equals to i'm gonna just duplicate the term instead of copying it again so that term plus 0 0.02985 divided by 12.3 so now i'm gonna multiply the left hand side and the right hand side by 12.3 so that i can get the value of n right so i'm multiplying this whole expression by 12.3 so n uh, will be equals to if you do the multiplication uh, you're gonna get uh, 0 0.105 and now we know fully well that n is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass so what is the molar mass of uh, i2 right so we're gonna have 0 0.05 equals to the mass divided by 127 multiplied by 2 so the mass is 0 0.105 multiply by 254 which is equals to 26.6 uh, recurring grams